Hey everybody, it's Manny from Chapel Forge. So today I'm gonna to be putting the garden to bed and putting garlic in. I usually do those things at the same time if I can get enough time to do it all at once. Um, so as you can see, the garden is, you know, lots of browns. I do have some zinnias that are still coming up. I have some turnips in here. All these zinnias got so huge they fell over. I did save a bunch of zinnia seeds, so I'll probably just wind up feeding those to the chickens. My okra got gigantic this year. It's, I mean, probably six feet tall. Um, so I had a great okra crop this year. There's a couple little like deadish ones on there. We'll just feed those to the chickens. It's supposed to get down to 35 this week. So I'm comfortable just calling it a day on the garden for this year. Um, I saved a bunch of sunflower seeds. So I'll just feed these to the chickens. Most of my birdhouse scores rotted on the vine. Um, I might have a couple that I'll be able to pull Typically, I let them just grow on the trellis and then let them hang there all winter. And that worked out great last year and I got a ton of seeds from it. I don't know what happened this year. My squash just, squash and pumpkins did not do well. I had put in basically this whole bottom garden just for squashes and pumpkins and they just, it was a flop. I don't know what the deal was. So nonetheless, we'll be feeding a lot of this stuff to the chickens. Um, I do have some beets down there that I'll probably let go for a little while. Um, I think I got most of the potatoes out, but there might still be a few in there. Um, I got done harvesting a little bit of garlic um, just now. Not garlic, herbs. I'm putting the garlic in. Um, I got some herbs, so I got a little bit of dill, um, some sage, just a small basket here. I got some mint. I think I found one jalapeno. Um, I also pulled a bunch of beans that were dry on the vine. So I'm gonna obviously save those seeds so that we can, oh, these are sharp, I'll take these, um, so that we can plant those next year. I do have some beans that are not dry yet, so I'm probably gonna leave some of the bean vines up for another couple weeks, see if I can get any more dry pods off of those. Um, but these tomatoes, they're getting super scraggly and done. The few pepper plants I had in are ready to go to the chickens. Um, I might let the zinnias go for a little while. They're still really pretty and I have a lot of pollinators still on a lot of my flowers. So over here I have dahlias and cosmos and things and they're actually like at their peak prettiness right now. So I have these white ones you can see there's a bee right there. Um, and so there's these nice pretty purple and pink ones. Um, I have tons of marigolds that are just, they just got explosive here in the last week or so. There are some little cherry tomatoes on here yet. I'm not sure that I have it in me to pick them. I am typically not one to let things like that go to waste. Um, but they're not really going to go to waste. We're going to eat them as eggs. So we'll just feed those to the chickens. I, oh, one more thing. I do have loofah to pick yet. I really thought my loofah was not going to make it. I had put in several loofah plants hoping to use it for goat milk soap and I just really thought none of them came, you know, came to be. A couple but weeks ago I noticed that I had several so um, you can see a huge one right there. Um, so I have several there. There's a couple just hanging. They got so heavy that this trellis actually fell over so our trellis is cattle panels and it worked really great these stayed up really well this one toppled a little i think it, just the weight of the loofahs that all came in at once right here um just kind of weighted down which is fine i'll get in there and dig out you can see wow there is way more loofah in there than i thought um all those loofahs i bet i man i might have 20 25 maybe i had actually bartered garlic for loofah from a friend because I thought I wasn't going to get it. So this year I was trying to be really diligent about saving seeds. So like I said, I did save some zinnia seed, sunflower seed, uh, tomatoes. Those are the first time I fermented tomato seeds and whew, yellow jacket. Um, saved those. I think I actually did it successfully. They look really good and dry and all that. Um, this was the first year I grew flowers. So I really wanted to make sure that I saved some flower seeds. Um, if there's anything in here that I miss, like nasturtium, maybe that'll go to seed. I might be able to save some of that. Um, maybe some dill or like parsley and things that I missed. Maybe I can grab some seed from that if it goes to seed here eventually. Um, but I'm really happy with this garden this year. I got a ton 
of tomatoes off of this garden. I got a ton of flowers. Um, I put in a whole two beds of strawberries. Um, and when my friend Missy was here, we pulled a bunch of runners and planted them like, you know, so that we could get new plants from them. So I'm really excited to hopefully have a really good strawberry crop next year. So I'll just take you along a little bit today as I pull this out and throw some of this stuff to the chicken. And speaking of the chickens, you see that little guy running away. So that one was from a broody hen hatched in the run and we didn't pull it out. We were gonna pull it out and put it separately. And then we thought, you know what? Let's see what nature does and it's doing great. It's not getting picked on. Um, it had kind of two moms that kind of kept it safe there for a while and it has been doing fantastic. No one's picking on it, it's eating. I mean, it's growing really well. Its feathers are coming in great. So just a little side note on the chickens cause I think this is just fascinating. All right, so when you go to plant your garlic, um, you know, you're gonna have your bulb. There's, I would say in general, most of them have five to six-ish, um, cloves in them so you're just gonna tear your bulb apart and then put them in i'll show you how, how that all right so you're just gonna kind of break them up like this <clears throat> and then put them in the ground like this so you see the pointy end is up the root end is down um you want to do like four to six inches apart is probably sufficient. Um, so I'm just gonna get these in here and then we're gonna get a really good thick layer of mulch on them. All right, so I had a trash bag full of some wood shavings. It's, you know, natural wood. It's no pressure treated or any kind of that garbage. So this will break down amazingly over the winter and it's gonna be a nice thick mulch for my garlic. So I would say you wanna shoot for like four to six inches. I'll probably come in and add some like dead leaves on top of this or maybe some straw or whatever. Give it a little bit more insulation, but this will give it a good start. All right, so that gives you a little bit of a tutorial on how to put your garlic in. Um, it's super easy to maintain your garlic. So you really don't have to do anything to it. If you do a really good layer of mulch and you have good soil, your, your garlic's gonna grow on its own. You don't need to water it. You don't have to do anything. I don't know that I've ever actually watered my garlic until maybe when it gets closer to like June, July, close to harvest time and it might, you know, be super, super hot. But over the winter and all that, I totally ignore it. Um, so, and then in June, well, okay, so we're in zone six, which is in Pennsylvania. Um, we will start getting scapes in June, which is the green curly things that'll pop up. So you'll have your, you know, the big green, um, why am I drawing a blank on what it would be called? The big green piece. <laughs> And then you'll have your scapes and they look like a Dr. Seuss kind of thing. Super good. They're like a garlicky, oniony kind of flavor. Um, they're kind of a delicacy. They're really hard to find. Um, and then you'll harvest this around summer solstice. Um, so, and then you just save your garlic bulbs and then you just repeat the process. It's a really awesome, like sustainable thing that you can do on your own. Um, so, <laughs> as you can see over here, my heritage turkeys just decided that they're wild. So um, I'm gonna let these turkeys have at some of the stuff that's left in here. Um, we may move some of the chicken fence to so just kind of let the chickens pick at this. I'll probably put like a board or something over this garlic for a week or whatever, just to keep the chickens out of it because they'll scratch the crap out of it and they'll be gone. Oh, and look, here's a chicken now. So I will probably do some pooling and send some of this into the chicken coop, um, you know, by hand. Um, but I might just let the chickens do a good bit of the work. You know, obviously they're not gonna get all the stuff on the, the panels off to pull that down. But a lot of this, I can kind of just let the chickens pick at, get the food that they want and whatever, um, and let them do the work. And then I can move their fence back to where they are. It's a great way to get some rotating in. Um, it's just really good permaculture. Um, so that's pretty much what I do to put my garden to bed. So we just come in get what we want, put the garlic in. Uh, you can either pull your stuff or let your chickens in and then you know, you can mulch your beds for winter. I, when the chickens are done, I'll probably come in and put, you know, some good layer of straw, um, maybe some more of these wood shavings, dead leaves, grass clippings, whatever we have, um, whatever kind of organic matter we have, just let that, um, you know, be the protective cover as we put the garden to bed for winter. Um, I would not leave your beds exposed through the winter. It's 
Your soil's really gonna like it if you give it some insulation and give it some good organic matter to start it going. Um, you can also use the bedding from your chicken coop or the straw from your goats or whatever it is that you have. You know, I could put all that stuff in here and winter will just do its job. And then, you know, next year I'm gonna have really rich soil. So there's lots of ways to put your garden to bed. There's no like right or wrong way necessarily. So if you have questions about the way I put my garden to bed, if you have questions about how to get garlic in or how to grow garlic, let me know. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you next time.